Hello, I am Sir John Armit, President of the Institution of Civil Engineers. I'm pleased to help introduce the findings of Global Construction 2030. ICE is proud to be a sponsor. Our Shaping the World campaign is helping to ensure that people across the globe benefit from high quality, sustainable infrastructure. This report helps us understand the long-term trends impacting on our industry and can act as guide for our future work. Thank you very much to all of you for coming here and joining us in the launch of this Global Construction Trends to 2030. It's a great report on the construction sector, which is spectacular. As an economist, I'll tell you the truth. We always say that it is much easier to forecast 20 years down the line than next quarter. But the truth is that that's not the case when you're looking at construction. It is very useful to have this tool. It's a tool for people like us to really have a guideline of how things are looking in different countries relative to different sectors and also to be able to move our companies forward. Uh, my name is Jeremy Leonard. I'm Director of Industry Services at Oxford Economics and I want to talk about some of the key economic trends that are coloring our forecast. If we look at the last 10 years, we all know that the emerging markets have been the motor of growth. <laughs> And we can see this, the gap between GDP growth in the emerging world and the developed world was extremely wide over the last 10 years, and in fact over the past 15 to 20. Now if we look at the current period, we can see that that's narrowed considerably for two reasons. A deceleration in the emerging markets, an acceleration in the developed world. So certainly for the rest of this decade, there are very different dynamics in terms of economic growth. And if we look out 10, 15 years, we can see it's clear the emerging markets are going to grow faster than the developed world, but that gap that used to be about four plus percentage points is going to narrow to the range of two to two and a half. And it's going to impact markets from China to India to the US to the UK. And I'll hand off to my colleagues, Mike and Graham, to talk about the real need of the report, which is what you all came to hear about. If we look at the current state of the construction market in 2014, what you'll see is that it's a $9.5 trillion industry globally. 10 countries account for about 60% of the total. The question is, how will that change between now and 2030? Two countries that stand out, India and Nigeria. Brazil is somewhat surprising to a country where we don't expect particularly substantial growth in infrastructure. If we look at what we're forecasting, we're forecasting growth in most of the developed world, most of which is a rebound from what we've lost in the last few years. And I have to highlight that some of the countries you know, particularly in Southern Europe, we don't expect to get back to anywhere near previous peak levels, even by 2030. This is a similar thing for emerging markets. The main message I would say here is that, you know, we're still expecting pretty substantial growth in most emerging markets over the next 15 years. At that point, I'm going to hand over to Graham. I want to just touch on the countries that are going to really accelerate global growth over the next 15 years. I'm going to talk about China. This year we're forecasting a negative growth, so contraction in the market. It's trying to transition its growth into a consumer-led, services-led economy, and I think we can safely say they're having difficulties transitioning an economy of that size. Moving on, the US in our forecast is the fastest growing developed country construction market in the world, exactly the reverse of China. The actual growth between where we are today with housing where housing should be is another 35% growth in the US housing market. India is our fastest growing construction market in the world in this forecast. Between 2014 and 2030, we predict the Indian construction market will grow by an average rate of 8.3%. Coming on to the UK, we're actually very optimistic. We're seeing coming forward a series of mega projects that's driving above trend growth over that 15 year period. That just really leaves me to mention all of the key sponsors that are behind the work that we do. We in particular wanted to thank Manuel and Semex for being lead sponsor. Thank you, Manuel. That shows a very, very clear position of leadership globally in the industry. I'm gonna hand over to you, Manuel, to discuss some of the trends that we see going forwards. As you can see, the report is it's very spectacular. First, I will give my hand to Sir John Armit. So please, Sir John. It just seems to me, listening to the forecasts, the issue in all of this is going to simply be who's going to pay for it. 
And that's not so much financing, it's actually what is going to be the funding of the financing. And that, as always, comes back to politics. The challenge is going to be, this is an assessment of need, and how is that need going to be um, finance scope funded and really funded more importantly than, than finance. But there is a lack of investor appetite to use that capital without certainty about the political policies which are going to make those long-term investments worthwhile. Good afternoon, everybody. First, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here to talk about uh, our business, which is global. We see huge opportunities in Africa going forward, but of course, also some very large challenges. A lot of our projects tend to be developed through finance. Yeah. That's still the majority of our business. We see uh, good opportunities in Africa, particularly in infrastructure, energy, housing, water in particular. Hello everybody, um, delighted uh, to be here. I mean, I, I think that the forecasts are going to be a pretty exciting time for, for a lot of us. Funding is a somewhat more challenging issue. And I think one of the trends that we're probably going to see over, over, over the next few years is much more focus on how cities fund uh, their infrastructure projects and their other projects, tapping into other sources and by getting buy-in from communities to fund that and to see the benefit of it. One of the, the themes that we feel very strongly is that the global construction market and the way that it, it is going to progress over the next 10 or 15 years will become even more reliant on global collaboration, global cooperation at both a company and a country and a political level. And so we are seeing a massive increase in due diligence work for overseas investors in mature markets. The resurgence of public-private funding are giving really exciting opportunities. I do manage the region for uh, China Britain Business Council, so we look carefully at all of the different industries and, and how they're developing. In particular, we've just written a report <coughs> about China's uh, very famous project. In China, the public and the private sector are not so easily distinguished. So identifying what exactly is the private and the public part of that, identifying what are the relative gains to be made by each side and making sure that those incentives uh, are aligned is, is a very uh, challenging aspect. Thank you, panelists, for, for their expertise. Global construction perspectives have done a fantastic job in spotting, analysing and identifying the uh, trends. And they have produced a document which really is an enormous achievement and I really do commend it uh, to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.